Star Wars 7x7 episode 1814 today. A little Star Wars potpourri, if you will. It's a collection of Star Wars stories that by themselves don't necessarily warrant a whole episode, but hey, let's tackle a whole bunch of them all at once, shall we? Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode where we're going to run down some bits of Star Wars news. We'll start with the top story of Star Wars Celebration. Tickets went on sale for Celebration yesterday and not surprisingly the Jedi Master VIP things are already sold out. They probably sold out in like seconds. But the four-day adult passes are all sold out as well, which is faster than they went for Celebration Chicago. And they don't tell us numbers as far as like how many they're selling or anything like that. So it's hard to know whether this is the result of a change in capacity for the attendance at Celebration Anaheim as compared to Chicago, or if it's just, you know, hey, like more people are even more excited about what's going to happen with Star Wars. And I will say it's, you know, like I don't want to knock anything, okay? But, you know, it's a little hard to imagine that as a possibility simply because we are going to be done with the saga, right? The saga is going to be over. The Skywalker saga will have finished its run by the time Celebration 2020 comes around. And so, you know, maybe there's a lot of hype and excitement over what's next. But it still, like, even considering the episode that I did yesterday talking about what the major milestones for Celebration 2020 are going to be, like... I, you know, I don't know if it's the same kind of draw, you know what I mean? I mean, you know, the Rise of Skywalker, you know, everybody wanting to see what was going to happen with that trailer, with that panel, you know, that's a huge driver. With the launch of Galaxy's Edge, another huge driver for attendance for Celebration Chicago. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's a little bit of a mystery. I find it intriguing. Um, Saturday, individual day passes for adults are also sold out, too. So, I mean... Ultimately, kudos to Reed Pop and to Lucasfilm because that's a successful situation. It means that people are, you know, really gangbusters about going to Celebration Anaheim. So I guess that's really ultimately what matters. It's a good thing. And yes, I know some folks have asked, and thank you so much for asking <laughs> for your interest. Yes, I do have my passes for Celebration Anaheim, so I will be reporting live once again from Star Wars Celebration next year, and it'll be wall-to-wall -wall coverage as it always is. So thank you very much for your support of me through all the previous celebrations that I've been reporting from for you. And let's get hyped for another one, something like 432 days away <laughs> or something like that. Okay, maybe we'll, you know, like we'll hold off on some of the hype for a while at least. Meanwhile, Carrie Russell, who is playing the scoundrel Zori Bliss in The Rise of Skywalker, is definitely taking to her work as a <laughs> as a person appearing in Star Wars because she's been very adept at saying things about what's happening with the Rise of Skywalker without saying anything at all. In this particular case recently, she was quoted as saying that when she first read the script that J.J. Abrams sent her, it made her cry and she says, you know, I don't know if it's going to turn out the way that he presented it to me when he presented it to me, but he's the right person to do this because he really cares and he's really trying to, you know, let this movie be a Star Wars movie, be what it is. So that's, of course, always a wonderful thing to say in good news, but again, Carrie Russell giving a bit of a juicy quote for Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker without really telling us much of anything. Now, moving on to The Mandalorian, the live-action series that's coming out in November on Disney+. Plus. The ice cream maker that has been shown by John Favreau on Instagram, it's kind of known as the ice cream maker because that's what everybody calls it when it's being carried by a character named Wilro Hood in the evacuation of Bespin in The Empire Strikes Back. And there's, of course, the running of the Wilro Hoods that happens at Celebration generally every year where a bunch of people dressed like that character carry around that thing. Well, according to io9, a source close to the production says that that thing is really called a camto and it is a safe or a lockbox, which ultimately kind of makes more sense in its way. And that word appeared 
in the footage that was shown of the Mandalorian to people at Celebration Chicago, the stuff that did not actually appear on the live stream, when Werner Herzog offers a Camtono of Beskar, which is a rare Mandalorian alloy, to our titular Mandalorian for the horrible job that he's sending him on, whatever it's going to be, since we don't know the details of that. But we do know now that that is a safe or lockbox, if you will, and it's called a Camtono, but I have a feeling we're still going to have a run of the Wilro Hoods with Camtonos now, now that we know what they're called, at Celebration Anaheim. All right, there's one other thing I want to share with you, and it's just a straight-up debunk, basically, <laughs> and I will explain after the break. Stay tuned. Hey Rebel Rouser, if you've got a business that needs to reach a dedicated audience of Star Wars fans or you know somebody who does, then you might want to reach out to me. <laughs> I've got a show that reaches thousands of people between the audio version, the video version, and our social media channels, and I'd love to find out how I can help you with your business ventures too. Just reach out at sw7x7.com slash sponsors, that's plural, S-P-O-N-S-O-R-S, that's sw7x7.com slash sponsors, and let's see how we can work together. Welcome back. So Scott Mendelson is a name you've heard me mention once or twice on the show. If you've been listening for a while, he's generally referenced during the Jedi business and scoundrel business episodes where we look at the financial performance of Star Wars movies in theaters. He writes the ticket booth column for Forbes.com and he just posted something where the headline is the next trailers for Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker and Frozen 2 should debut exclusively with Maleficent Mistress of Evil. So... Yeah, nah, not so much. <laughs> I mean, I can't speak for Frozen 2, to be honest with you, but based on past history, particularly with The Last Jedi and with Rogue One, the next trailer for Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker should debut exclusively on Monday Night Football on October 14th, which is Columbus Day, and then will also debut on YouTube shortly thereafter. So it's certainly possible that it will be in theaters with Maleficent Mistress of Evil, after that, but it's definitely going to debut sooner than that based on past history. So yeah, uh, not necessarily in agreement with Scott on that one. I tend to agree with a lot of his stuff, but eh, not on this particular one. And that is going to do it for our Star Wars Potpourri episode, picking up new stories that don't quite make up for an episode in their own individual rights, but put all together and hey, here we are at the end of an episode of Star Wars 7x7. What do you know? So, thank you so much for joining me for it, as always, and may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. This podcast is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it. <laughs>